All right, guys. This video is going to be the wiring portion of my 2.4 build. I'm going to call this 6.5 because it kind of goes along with the firmware, depending on the order you do things. But with that said, let's get right started. So the first thing you want to do is to prepare the jumpers on your mainboard. Anything outlined in red will be to remove. Anything in green will be to add on there. The number four along the bottom, that's going to be your fan control voltages. Make sure you set those correctly for your fans if they're not all the same. And the stepper motor jumpers, you want those on before we get going because they are going to be underneath your motor drivers. In my instance, the number three is to power it for USB. If that is the case for you, I at least needed this when I was flashing before I got started. Made it a lot easier. If it didn't work, I had the option at least to replace the board easily without having to undo everything. But just something to keep in mind when you move forward. This is the basics of the low voltage wiring for the main board. You'll have the motors, at least in my case, all along one side. The other side, you'll have your fan controls, your end stops, your signal, or your NeoPixel and probe, and then your output to your LEDs, solid state relay, and your hot end heater. You'll also have the power in rails along the bottom. This is the very basic setup pulled straight from the Verona website for this board. Again, they should have multiple boards set up there for you to look at, depending on what you have. Because I am using an EBB36 in sensorless homing, there are some things here I do not need. I do not need an extruder wire because the extruder controller is built right into the board. So is the probe and the NeoPixel, along with the two fans on the hot end. I am doing sensorless homing, so I do not need the X and Y end stop pins. And then for the ZN stop, I'm going to be using the probe for that, so I don't need those as well. So that kind of simplifies the wiring, at least going to the main board. This is my tool board. So make sure you pick the right revision if you have one. If you're not using one, obviously you don't need this step. But this just kind of shows instead of my hot end fans going to the tool head board, I have two plugs for fans here. I have the thermistor. I have the output for the hot end, I have my probe. I do have an end stop pin, but I won't be using that because I'm going to be doing sensorless. I have the motor plug on the top and I have the can input on the, directly on the top as well. So I might not use everything here, but it makes wiring, in my opinion, a lot easier. You have to do lots of little wiring on one thing, but from there you can just run one big cable back to the main board. So this is the rest of the low voltage wiring. Uh, like I said, I have, in my case, I'll have a USB-C out from the Octopus right to the Raspberry Pi. That is the data control. I will also have a USB-A to the USB-C onto the Raspberry Pi from the Octopus. That will power it, which is kind of handy, but it just makes a circle. Then I will have a USB-A out to the CAN adapter. Then the CAN adapter gets power and sends CAN out to the tool headboard. So instead of having, I think it would be seven different wires coming in from the tool head, I just have one cable and it only goes to the CAN board, whereas the rest is hooked up with USB. This is the basic of the high voltage wiring. Now, all power supplies are probably not going to be the same. For instance, my input is on the opposite side of the output makes things a little different but it's all essentially the same wiring wise make sure your bed is wired up correctly when you get to this point you'll want to have the thermal fuse in there between your solid state relay make sure when you wire up your solid state relay it should the input should be indicated a positive and a minus side make sure that's correct when you wire it to your octopus board or your main board whatever you're using one end of the bed will go right to the, the ground the other side will be your last remaining wire at this point. We'll go to your neutral. Now, depending on how you have it wired up, it might go to that on your power supply or it might go to a Wago clip or something like that. But just want to pay attention, double, triple check all of this. And most power supplies will have a cover over the high voltage wires at the very least, just like the picture here of the main board does. Do your best to keep that in place. It could be dangerous if you drop something or you touch it when there's power to it and you could hurt yourself. 
for situating things within the printer. This is straight from the Voron manual. This is kind of what it shows. And again, this shows it with the power supply all on the same side, which mine is not. So I wired it mine and set it up kind of so that everything on the high voltage was down in that one corner. So as you can kind of see here, I have the solid state relay and then the input voltage to the power supply on the bottom left with my wagos, and that's where my input will be. Everything else is gonna be low voltage. Then from there, I started to wire up my motors. When I got to that point, I needed some USB cables and just high voltage wires, so I actually did that. And then at this point, I finally installed the print bed and the cable chain. The cable chain, I find it's easiest to just lay out flat, open it all up, put whatever cables you need inside of it, and then install it. For me, it wasn't too bad, it was just the A and B cable. But you can see how the bed layers will route through the middle hole that is a circle. Whereas the reference point that we've been using the whole time for the printer, that little square output, is where the AB drives will go. So I just wanted to make a point and show where I'm kind of at with this. This is essentially complete. I don't have any skirt on except for to hold the input and the switch right here. As you can see, I have all of the high voltage wiring right here. Nothing goes beyond this point. And again, keep that cover on there. Mine's clear, unfortunately, so you can't really see it. But keep it on there so you don't accidentally touch it. It's not on right now, so it's fine to touch at least for the moment. Wiring goes down. I did print a couple of these out to kind of keep things tidy, but towards the front here is kind of a mess. But it is what it is, and at least getting it working right now. Um, if everything works, you should be able to turn it on and get right to main sale. So everything turns on just fine, even the tool head. I just have to fix the thermistor wire that came uncrimped and then tidy that up. But everything works. I can pull it up on main sale. It just doesn't see that thermistor. So once you get to that point, you can make sure everything is up to date, which you should be if you flash it already. If you need to flash it now, do it now. Just note that some boards you might need a jumper pin on. My board, way down here, those two pins right there are where I would need to put a jumper to flash it. But everything else at this point is good. Like I said, I can pull it up on main sale. Now you can start putting your configuration together and kind of working out what you need. I will have a configuration to set up base for the printer then I will have the tool headboard included, and because I'm using an Eddy probe, I will have that included as well. So that's kind of the basics of wiring. Like I said, everybody is will be kind of different depending on what parts they have. So that's really as in depth as I can get. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, please let me know.